Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Bluegrass Planet Radio. I'm your host, DJ Delta Dawn, and I am so glad to be here with you on your Wednesday evening. And it has been a great week so far for me. I hope it has been for you as well. And we are inching ever so close to the holidays. I mean, Christmas is Christmas Eve is one week from today. I was thinking about that today going, oh, my gosh, have I got everything done? And, of course, the answer is no. Um, <laughs> so I hope that all of your preparations and your shopping and your cooking is coming along much better than mine is at the moment. I have a feeling I'm going to spend most of my weekend trying to get things finished up. But nonetheless, I hope your week is going great. And uh, we've got a great, great show for you tonight. And our guest is um, one that I have been excited to talk to ever since You know, I discovered his music and became a fan and just knew I had to have him on the show at some point because I love his sound. I love the music that they make, and um, it's just absolutely phenomenal. And I want to give you a little bit of background on our guest this this evening. Um, It is no surprise just how great a band they are. They have quite a following, and... The thing about it is, is the highest levels of acoustic musicianship exist a mystery, a mystery of tone, taste, and timing. And it can best be illustrated by giving a good musician a good instrument and asking him to briefly strum, pick, and bow. This is pretty much how you describe our guest tonight and all the many things that they have done as a band. Um to give you some further background, Frank Sullivan left the cold climes of Alaska for the bluegrass hotbed of Washington, D.C., and he's built a reputation as a monster mandalist and, and become a major festival attraction, which, my gosh, they draw crowds near and far. Um, and his band, Dirty Kitchen, has really reaped much success and uh, since they've been together. The band consists of um, Sullivan and banjoist Mike Mumford, who is the 2013 IMB, IBMA Banjo Player of the Year, as well as guitarist Chris Lequette, who is the IBMA Instrumentalist of the Year Momentum Award winner, and Doghouse bassist Dan Booth. And uh, they simmer a bluegrass, newgrass kind of sound and I tell you their latest album is called On the Edge and I'm telling you it's off the chain good if you love this style of bluegrass you absolutely are going to love Frank Sullivan and Dirty Kitchen and um, so with us tonight we have uh, the founder and the lead singer of the band um, Frank Sullivan with us and I would like to welcome him now to our program hello Frank hey Delta Doll what's going on (laughs) Hey, how are you? Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me on uh, online, on air, or whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's a little bit of both, and it, it is such an honor and pleasure to have you with us this evening. I, As I was saying in the intro there, I became an instant fan. The moment I heard your music, I was just blown away. I mean, I've I've kind of been new to this bluegrass thing for about seven, eight, nine years now. And so in the last year or so, I've just been really amazed at all of the talent and and it just seems like, um, you know, just uncovering so much more of it. And when I stumbled upon you you and your band, I was just like, whoa. I mean, it just kind of took bluegrass to a whole new level for me. I think uh, I think we're a good gateway band for folks. Uh, at least that's what I've been telling a couple of people here recently. Um, because, you know, we play traditional music, we play non-traditional music, we play non-traditional music traditionally, and traditional music non-traditionally. So figure that one out. There you go. Somewhere along the way, you know, I think the the beauty of bluegrass music is that, you know, no matter how modernized it can be at times and, and how it, you know, diversified in its different styles, the traditional aspect of it always comes into play and is always a part of it. And that's what I love about it is, is but it really does give listeners and fans so much more in this genre um, than I think pretty much any other music genre out there. Well, I, I think uh, where we lie, at least, is is kind of like more on the, you know, artistic, kind of progressive, maybe more contemporary side. At least I think so. I don't know. I All I want to do is just play music, and hopefully folks will like it and be able to write songs and arrange them the way I want. I did about 
I did six years, uh, six years, one month, and 24 hours, actually, with the uh, United States Navy Band here in D.C. That's actually what brought me to uh, Washington, D.C. I auditioned uh, for a band called Country Current on the electric guitar, and they had a, a country band, so I played a lot of chicken-picking kind of country and rock and things like that on the electric guitar, and they had a bluegrass band offshoot that we just went and played, uh, you know, a dozen festivals or so a year, and I was able to play mandolin, keep my mandolin chops up, and, and some fiddle. But, uh, yeah, I decided I wanted to do something different and kind of uh, go go my own way, cut my own path or whatever you want to call it, you know, and uh, do my thing and, and actually try to make music as opposed to just play music. I was feeling like I was just kind of a little stagnant there and I needed to go do something else, so... Here I am. Well, there you are, and I, I'm glad that you're making music because your music is absolutely phenomenal. It's some of the best bluegrass I've heard in a long time, and I sincerely mean that. And one of the things, though, that I found so interesting about you is that I actually kind of stumbled upon this in the course of, you know, doing my research on you and, and learning more about the band and the music that you play and make. But you're a gourmet chef, and uh, I thought that was really cool. I mean, did you – um was – that something you kind of always w- was interested in or, you know, how did you go from gourmet, sh- did the gourmet chef come first or did the music come first? Which came first, chicken or the egg kind of thing? Well, I, I've always loved to cook. My mother was in, in the, the restaurant business for many years. And even when I was in high school or even younger than that, I mean, when I was a kid, my mom would set me up on the counter and like have me stir the you know pot or watch what she was doing. And then, showed me how to cut things up, and then the next thing you know, I'm making dinners. And then in high school, a few buddies of mine, they would always come over to the house, and I would make, you know, big meals, and they'd, they'd call me actually Chef Boy or Frank, funny enough. But um, <laughs> I don't consider myself a chef. I'm I'm definitely a cook. I, I, love to, uh, I love to experiment and cook good food and come up with new recipes or expound on, you know, more traditional recipes, kind of like how our music is. You know, I like to kind of just go – I like – you know, the, the basics and, and really traditional meals, too. But uh, I made carbonara a couple of nights ago here at the house. And, man, I you know, instead of doing it really traditionally, I add a little this and that, you know, some caramelized onions and garlic. And the next thing you know, I'm putting a mirepoix on there that was caramelized as opposed to just onions and garlic. And, and you know, it just kind of taking it a little bit beyond, not straying too far from tradition, but, you know, enough to make it my own and I think that's kind of how our our music is as well and I don't know I think uh the whole chef thing is 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 overplayed a little bit like like I said I love to cook and and I think I, I probably think about it more often than than I should <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I come up with these going down the road I'm trying to think about you know songs going down the road I'm, and, and, and to me, you know, I come from a sick family, so when we get together, um, and everybody played music in my family, too. So we'd have these big meals, and then the next thing you know, everybody's whipping out instruments playing music. So it's just two things that bring people together in my world, and um, I always find it to be uh, really fulfilling and, and just, you know, makes makes my soul feel good to, to share a meal with people and then make music. So... I started putting those two things together with the Dirty Kitchen Experience. We call it the Dirty Kitchen Experience where I'll cook a big meal for, you know, well, for our CD release party, I did a three-course meal, a um, multi-component course. You know, each course had multi-components and then uh, followed it with a concert. But I did that for about, oh, I guess, 90-something people in a private little uh, area here in Capitol Hill, D.C., and... uh, kind of a pricey tag, but it, it was, our, you know, I think it was 125 bucks, but it included three-course meal, mm-hmm. wine pairings, dessert, you know, all the whole nine yards, and then we followed it with an hour-and-a-half-long concert, and, and everybody walked away, and everybody had a CD, too. It was our CD release, so it was a super special night, and uh, I want to continue to do more of those and, you know, figure out a way to... There's a video we put online, too, of that night, and we're going to figure out a way and how to do that more and possibly maybe get it on in the mainstream and somehow pitch it to uh, the Food Network or, you know, the Travel Channel or something like that. And I don't know. 
just seems like it'd be a good. I would watch it, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, by the way, the, your video that you speak that you speak of is featured on our homepage of our website um, this week. It's the featured video of the week. We we selected it, and then it's really good. I mean, it really gives people a good bird's eye view of what you were talking about about that special meal and the the city release party. And I just have to ask you: Were you absolutely exhausted at the end of the night cooking and then playing for an hour and a half? Uh, well, I, you know, cooking multi. Component. It took me a couple of days to get all the stuff together and ready, and then prepped, and then have everybody. You know, we had a ton of friends that were volunteering to help and whatnot. Yeah, I was exhausted. And then the next day, we got up and you know, shot this for a concert for like 400 people the next day at the same place. <laughs> and uh, just that whole, I did a cooking class before all of that too, and it was just like a whole. Uh, whew, yeah, I was exhausted for sure. It's definitely a lot of work, but it's so fun, you know, and it's really great to see people smile and, like, you know, when you're eating with somebody or connecting with them on, on the most basic level, which is sustenance, you know, and it's, I try to make it art, you know, as well, make it look mm-hmm. really nice and have all the flavors, you know, come together. And Anyway, long story short, is I, I really love it when, when people love that, you know. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's some something there that you know. It's just, just like when you go play music and you wear your heart on on your sleeve, and and uh, you know the audience feeds off of that, and then they're excited, and then the band feeds off of that, and it becomes cyclical, you know. And it's like this mass psychosis kind of deal, and uh, everybody is working together to have a really good time. So mm-hmm. that's our goal with it, you know. Well, and and your current CD is called On the Edge, and uh, and this is your sophomore release. And talk a little bit about how this this project is is different from, say, your initial, um, you know, your debut album. Well, I had a couple of uh, solo projects that I put out, um, 2001, and then 2006, and then 2010, and then this one here this year in April. Uh, each one is just a, a slice of time, you know, songs I'm writing, things I'm I'm getting into, sounds I'm trying to create. And, you know, there's I look back and, they, you know, they're cool and they sound good, but each one I'm like, oh, man, I could have done this differently or that differently, you know, but whatever. It's it's that time, it's that, you know, that little, mm-hmm. that little section of my life is being represented in, you know, on that CD or whatever. So we're going to try to do that again. Actually, we're going to get in the studio in February and uh, hopefully uh, come up with something really cool. Um, I, I can't imagine it wouldn't be. I mean, with with the guys I get to play music with, it's pretty incredible. Everybody, Mike Munford and Chris Luquette and Danny Booth are just incredible players, incredible dudes, awesome to hang out with on the road, you know. And then we get up on stage every night together and – you know, the, we flip the switch and we, uh, like like I said, we try to get that momentum with the audience going, you know, that they were, that mass psychosis, for lack of a better phrase, I guess, um, where we just have a grand time every time we get on stage. Well, and, you know, I'm so excited that, that there's going to be a new project in 2014. And speaking of 2014, I mean, you guys already are going to be um, – you know, I was looking the other day at your your tour dates, and starting the third of January, you guys are going to be on the road touring. And um, talk a little bit about the tour because I did notice that one of those tour dates includes um, a trip to Carborough, North Carolina, which is about thirty minutes down the road from me. And so I was very excited to see that. I, I hope I can get out to see you guys play live because, man, what a show that will be. Um, but talk a little bit about some of your plans that you guys have got on tap for 2014. Sure. Well, if you uh, let me know, give me a shout or text me or something, and uh, I'll make sure you have my phone number, and you can text me, and I'll put you on the guest list if you're coming. Awesome. And, uh, that'll be at the Art in Carborough. Sure. Yes, I know. I know. Actually, I work um, in my day job. I work in Chapel Hill for the University of North Carolina, and um, so Carball is just like right there at it, you know. Um, so yeah, I would definitely love to come out and see you guys. Um, that would be a, a real treat for me. As a matter of fact, my birthday is two days later, and I was already thinking the other day, what am I going to do my 
birthday weekend, this would be a perfect thing to do, to tell you the truth. Um, so, yes, I will be in touch with you about that. But, um, but yeah, you guys are playing some, some serious dates. I mean, you're doing some New York dates. You're doing New Jersey, Maryland. I mean, you're kind of spread around a little bit. Um, and, and that's really cool. Um, about how well, many dates are you looking to play? Well, I'm not exactly sure this year. We uh we somewhere between a hundred and probably a hundred and thirty maybe. Um, depending. Um we we traveled last year, I mean and just kinda in review. I mean we went everywhere from Washington State to San Diego, you know, Seattle to San Diego. We played in Canada, we played uh in France at a couple of really big festivals, from New York down to Florida, um, the Midwest. I mean, we we definitely get around. We I had to buy a new van in October, uh, and then we toured from mid-October to mid-November, and then we took uh, mid-November until we hit out on the road in January off. Uh, mm-hmm. But we put 10,000 miles on the van in a month, just to give you an idea how much we drive. I've been telling people we drive for a living and play music for fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Because I tell you, those long road trips in a van can't be too fun, you know, but so long. And so, you know, getting out there and being able to perform on stage and, and for your fans across the country is, is the reward from all the long travels, you know? Oh, yeah. And we all love it. I mean, we, we run into all kinds of wonderful people and, you know, we make incredible friends. And, you know, it's, I mean, I could call people in California or I can call people in the Midwest or in, you know, say, and say, hey, I'm coming uh, in your area. You mind if I? Do you have? You know, can I stay at your place for a night? I mean, we've made incredible friends throughout the years, and that's the great thing about bluegrass music and the acoustic music world. Everybody is, you know, super friendly. It's like this really big community, and everybody kind of takes care of everybody else. It's, uh, it reminds me of my family, you know, and I think that's um, that's why I'm so. Uh, attracted to it all the time, I guess. But yeah, yeah I mean, we're and all kinds of stuff. We're going out to Denver playing the Midwinter Bluegrass Festival uh, towards the end of February. Uh, we're playing in, um, let's see, Holly Springs, Mount Holly. Uh, we're playing in Yonkers, New York, Brooklyn. We're playing, gosh, Myrtle Fest. Uh, all kinds of places. <laughs> you, you are. Know, in, in Myrtle Fest, I have to say, you know, I'm... I, being a being a proud being a proud North Carolinian, um, Merle Fest, you know, has been a staple in our state for gosh decades. And um I was just looking at their lineup for twenty fourteen the other day. They've already got like a hundred and thirty artists and bands secured for the upcoming festival and I did see your name on there. I was like, Yes, you know and uh so I hope to get to Merle Fest this year. I've never been but um I definitely want to go because um I, I Everyone that I know that has ever attended said it is the festival to go to. If you don't go to another festival, that is the one to go to each year. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I have never been as well. Um, yeah, let's see. We're playing Branson at Silver Dollar City. Uh, we're playing in uh, Nome, Alaska, Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, gosh. Uh, Pennsylvania. Um, we've been talking about Australia. We're playing in uh, Casper, Wyoming. Montana, Santa Cruz, California. I mean, oh wow! Canada, Columbia. <laughs> now, when you go to Australia, will that be your first time touring there? Uh, yeah, nothing set in stone. We we're just kind of talking about uh, talking with some promoters there and whatnot. But uh, we've been wanting to go there for a long time. It'll be my first time. Yes. And, uh, oh, wow. All right, that's on my bucket list to visit before I die. I've always said that, and New Zealand were the two places I wanted to travel to. Um, so I hope you get to do that. That would be awesome for you guys. And I tell you, it's, it, your popularity has just soared, and you've got fans all over the place. Um that just continue to follow you wherever you go, and it's no surprise. I mean, as talented as you are, um, you know, some of the best musicians I've ever heard anywhere um, is in your band. And um, and so I'm really excited for what's to come in 2014. I look forward to the new project coming out. And uh, I know you're short on time, Frank, so I don't want to detain you any longer. But 
I will tell you that when the new project is getting ready to hit or drop, just let us know. We'd love to have you back to talk about it, um, and we'll even play some cuts off of that, and we'll help promote it any way that we can to get the music out there because your band is so good. It is definitely the kind of band that needs to be heard. Um, so we'll do all we can to help promote you and your music and to keep listeners informed of what's happening with you guys as it unfolds. Well, likewise, Don. Thank you so much for your support and the opportunity to, you know, chat. And I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you what, we'll spread Bluegrass Planet Radio around on the social media as well. And hopefully, folks will be listen. More folks will be listening in. Oh well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Well, Frank, I I wish you and your family and all the guys in the band a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, um, Happy New Year, and I am sure that we will be in touch. And I will definitely be in touch with you about your visit to North Carolina in January. So, um, you know, best of luck and for much continued success to you guys as you go forward. Thank you, Don. Happy holidays to you. I'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Ah, uh, I must tell you, one of the nicest gentlemen that I have ever spoken to, Frank Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we want to say a huge thank you to him for taking time away. He um, he had something to do, and so we would have kept him longer, but um, he, he had something to do, and uh, so we were just so glad that he was able to be with us this evening. And before we wrap tonight, I want to play a couple of cuts off of their latest album. Um, for those of you who are new and uh, may not know who Frank Sullivan and Dirty Kitchen are, um, they've got a new album out. It's called On the Edge, and I'm going to be playing a few cuts off of that. Um, first up will be Day to Day, which is their current release, and then followed by Wild Unknown, and then their take and remake on uh, the old Box Tops hit, The Letter, and then uh, we'll close the set of songs um, with one called M80. So here you go. Take a listen. <laughs> I'm 
There's only one way to describe Frank Sullivan and Dirty Kitchen, smoking hot bluegrass. And that was four tracks off of their latest album, On the Edge. Uh, you just heard M80. Oh, that was just jamming, smoking. <laughs> and then you heard um, their remake of the Box Tops old song, The Letter, and I love it done, bluegrass style. Um, before that, you heard from Wild Unknown, and the set was started off with their latest release, Day to Day. And, uh, again, we want to say a huge thank you to Frank Sullivan for being our special guest this evening. Such a pleasure speaking with him. And uh, very, very excited for what's to come in 2014. Can't wait for the new project to come out. And uh, if this latest release is any indication, we are in for a treat, folks. No doubt about it. Um, and this is actually going to be our last show for 2013. Can you believe it? We are so close to the end of the year. Um, we will not be having um, our weekly um, Picking and Jamming Showcase on Sunday afternoon this week due to the holiday. Um, I've got some family plans going on, so it's just nearly impossible to try to you know, fit that in. So we are going to take time off through the end of the year to celebrate uh, the season with our families and uh, friends. And so we will be back on January 2nd, though, of 2014, and we will be kicking off a brand new year. And we have got a double header that night. Uh, we have a, a country band out of um, Canada. They are a trio called Western Avenue, and they will be with us at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by later that night, we will have an all-female bluegrass band with us called Sweet Potato Pie, and they reside uh, at hell from right here in North Carolina, where I am based, and they will be with us at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. So I tell you, if you love Frank Sullivan and, Kit and Dirty Kitchen, you want to make sure that you follow us on Twitter, you go to our website, and you stay up on who we have coming, because I'm telling you, we've got so many IBMA winning bluegrass artists. Um, we've got indie bluegrass, Americana, and folk artists that we're going to be bringing to you, and country artists as well, and really trying to get as many of your favorites on our show as we go forth. And we, so far, 2014 is really going to be rocking and rolling. Uh, we almost have half of, we're, we're booked all the way into, you know, mid-February at this point. So we are excited for what's happening, and we're going to be bringing you all the great bluegrass. We're also going to be out covering some of the events um, that we can get to. So uh, we'll be having reports from that as well. So, we just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. Again, a very special thank you to Frank Sullivan for being our special guest. And I want to wish you a Merry Christmas to you and yours and a very happy and prosperous New Year. And uh, we will be back January 2nd of 2014, and we definitely look forward to being back here with you. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close and wish you all very well and thank you so much for supporting our program and for being here and if you're brand new to our program tonight welcome aboard welcome to the bluegrass planet family We're always glad to have new listeners and we definitely look forward to having you back again real soon take care all god bless and good night You've been listening to Bluegrass Planet Radio. Find us on the web at bluegrassplanetradio.com, on Twitter at Bluegrass Planet, and on Facebook at Bluegrass Planet Radio. Thank you for joining us.